welcome to learn yourself our next kingdom is animalia this kingdom is a wide kingdom and it is further categorized and divided into 10 sub categories so these are organisms which are eukaryotic multicellular and having heterotropic mode of nutrition that means they are depending upon other organisms or plantae family for their food and nutrition need their cell do not have cell walls most animals are mobile they are further classified based on the extent and type of body design differentiation found so there are 10 subdivision from animalia group first is porifera second is Celenterata, third is platyhelminthes then nematoda annelida arthropoda milisca echinodermata protocordata and vertebrata so these are 10 subdivisions from animalia group now vertebrata is further divided into six subcategory that is cyclostomata physis amphibia reptalia avis and mammalia so one by one we are going to see each and every classification and some of the examples for them let us start with our first classification and that is porifera here what all pictures i have shown is just for the reference and from these pictures you will be able to remember the examples for this family and it will be easy for you to understand the characteristic properties for those animals so porifera family the porifera word means organisms with holes as you can see here these are non motile animal attached to some solid supports and there will be holes all over their body or pores all over their body now what is the function of these holes or pores that this lead to a canal system that helps in circulating water throughout the body to bring in food and oxygen now water will circulate throughout their body and this water will bring food and oxygen to their body and that's why their body design will be porous the body design involves very minimal differentiation and division into tissues so very very primitive organisms they are and very less differentiation in the tissues we can see in this kind of organisms they are commonly called sponges and mainly found in marine habitat so these are the example for porifera second is cylinderata so these animals are living in water they show more body design differentiation there is a cavity in their body so that is how they are different from the porifera family that here in cylinderata we can see the cavity in their body the body is made up of two layers of the cells one makes up the cell on outside of the body and the other makes the inner lining of the body so there will be two layers in their body as we can see in jellyfish some of these species live in colonies like others have solitary like hydra jellyfish and some sea creatures now third family is platyhelminthes the body of animal in this group is far more complexly designed now from this family the complex designs have started earlier these two families have very basic design now from this family the complex design or the organisms have started complexly designed then in the two other groups we have considered so far so compared to porifera and cylinderata platyhelminthes organisms are having complex body design the body is bilaterally symmetrical as we can see in this picture we can see that bilaterally symmetrical that means left and right side are almost symmetrical with each other meaning the left and right halves of the body have same design there are three layers of cells from which differentiated tissues can be made which is why such animals are called triploblastic now this is important characteristic why they are called triploblastic because there are three layers of cell within their body and that's why they are called triploblastic this allows outside and inside body linings as well as some organs to be made this is the some degree of tissue formation however there is no true internal body cavity in which well developed organs can be accommodated the body is flattened and 
which is why these animals are called flatworms so there are two characteristics which we need to remember for this type of family that they are called triploblastic and they are also known as flatworms because of their body design they are either free living or parasitic some examples are free living animals like planaria or parasitic animals like liver fluke so here what we see in the picture is example of planaria the next group is nematoda the nematode body is also bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic so this is one of the similarity between platyhelminthes and nematoda that they both are having bilaterally symmetrical body and they are also called triploblastic but what is the difference nematoda families organisms bodies are cylindrical rather, rather than flattened whereas we have seen in platyhelminthes family that we have seen the example of flat worm because their bodies were flat here the bodies are cylindrical so this is a difference and this is a similarity now there are tissues but no real organs although a sort of body cavity or pseudocoelom is present these are parasitic worms and one of the example is worm that cause elephantitis and here we can see the example of round worm the next family is annelida annelid animals are also bilaterally symmetrical and triploblastic but in addition to this they have a true body cavity now what this body cavity will do then this allows true organs to be packed in body structure there is thus extensive body and organ and there is this extensive organ differentiation because of the body cavity this differentiation occurs in segmental fashion with the segments lined up up one after the other from head to tail these animals are found in variety of the habitat like fresh water marine water as well as on the land and leeches are the example of annelid families organisms the next is arthropoda this is probably the largest group of animals these animals are bilaterally symmetrical and segmented there is an open circulatory system so because of that blood does not flow in well defined blood vessel the coelomic cavity is blood filled and they have joint legs and butterfly house flies spider corp scorpions crabs are the example of arthropoda family then next is mollusca in this group animals are bilaterally symmetric the coelomic cavity is reduced and because of that there will be little segmentation they have an open circulatory system and kidney like organs for excretion there is a foot that they are using for the moving around and the example is snail next is echinodermata in greek echino means hedgehog that means a spiny mammal and derma means skin that means a mammal with a spiny skin this organisms are part of echinodermata family thus these are spiny skinned organisms and they are they are free living marine animals they are triploblastic and having a coelomic cavity they also have peculiar water driven tube system that they use for moving around they have hard calcium carbonate structures that they use as a skeleton and the examples for echinodermata organisms are sea stars and sea urchins then next is protocordata these animals are bilaterally symmetrical that means they have symmetrical body towards left side and right side and triploblastic and having a coelom they show a new feature of body design namely a notochord now what is this notochord notochord is a long rod like support structure as you can see in this figure and this nod structure will separating a nervous tissue from the gut and it provides a place for muscles to attach for ease of the movement now protocordats may not have a proper notochord present at all stages in their lives or for entire length of the animal so for some of the lifespan they'll have this notochord in their body and notochord will not be present in their entire body length now protocordats are marine animals and examples are 
balanoglossus, herdmenia, and aphioxus. Then last family is vertebrata. This animals have a true vertebral column and internal skeleton allowing a completely different distribution of muscles attachment point to be used for the movement. Now vertebrates are bilaterally symmetrical, triploblastic, silomic cavities and segmented with complex differentiation of body tissue and organs. So vertebrata families organisms are having complex design among all this family. All cordex possesses the following features. That first one is they have notochord. Second, they have dorsal nerve cord. They are triploblastic. They have pad gill pouches and so they are silomet. Now, further vertebrates are grouped into six classes. Now, vertebrata further classified into six categories that first is cyclostomata, second is pisces, then amphibia, reptalia, avis and mammalia. So, first is cyclostomata. Cyclostomes are jawless vertebrates. They are characterized by having an elongated eel-like body, circular mouth, slimy skin and scaleless. They are ectoparasites or borers of other vertebrates. And the examples are lamprey and hackfish. Then comes Pisces. These are fishes. They are exclusively aquatic animals. So Pisces are aquatic animals. Their skin is covered with scales and plates. They obtain oxygen dissolved in water by using their gills. So gills like structure also we can observe in these organisms. The body is streamlined and muscular tail is used for the movement. They are cold-blooded animals and they have two-chambered heart. They lay eggs. We can think of many kinds of fishes, some with skeleton made entirely of cartilage such as shark and some with a skeleton made up of both bone and cartilage such as tuna or rohu. So this kind of fishes are example of Pisces family. Now comes amphibia. So amphibians we know that they will live in the water as well as on the land. So these animals differ from fish in the lack of scale and in having muscle gland in the skin. And they have three chambered heart. Respiration is through with their gills or lungs. So they have both the structures, gills and lungs. They lay eggs. These animals are found both in water and on the land. And we know the examples that frogs, toads, Salamanders are the example of amphibian families. Then comes reptilia. These animals are cold-blooded, have scales and they breathe through lungs. While most of them have three-chambered heart, crocodiles have four-chambered heart. They lay eggs with tough covering and they do not need to lay their eggs in the water, unlike amphibian. So this is a basic difference between amphibian and reptilia. Snakes, turtle, lizards, crocodiles are the example of reptilia animals. Then avis. These are warm-blooded animals and have four-chambered heart. They lay eggs. There is an outside covering of feathers and two forelimbs are modified for the flight. They breathe through lungs and all birds fall in this category. That all birds are comes under avis family. Then comes mammalia. This is the largest family and mammals are warm-blooded animal with four-chambered heart. They have mammary gland for the production of milk to nourish their young ones. Their skin has hair-like structure. They also have sweat and oil glands on their skin. Most mammals are familiar to us and most mammals produce live young ones. Then few of them like platypus and echidna lay eggs and some like kangaroos give birth to very poorly developed young ones. So these are some of the exceptions but most of the mammals will produce healthy and live young ones. So thank you for watching and learning with us. If you have any doubt please comment down below.
I'll see you in next video. Till then, keep learning, keep sharing. And don't forget to subscribe, learn yourself.